the ability of cloth, not according to your size, but your size will be bigger than cloth. Experience the beauty of Christianity. The same God blessing me, bless you. Bless you in a higher dimension. Today is the last day you go through struggles. Feed your life with the nourishing, undiluted Word of God. Renew your hope and get energized with God's message for you. You say, my wife is too fat. She shall be fat and... You say, my wife is too slim. She shall be like a palm. He said, she is too short. Lo, I am with you. Whichever way. Watch the life-transforming messages of David Ibiomir on salvation, healing, marriage, success, prosperity, and lots more. The entrance of his world. When you are able to gather the appropriate scripture, and light comes from that scripture, darkness can have power out. And the light shined in the darkness, and darkness comprehended it. When you have God's word in any area, and you are able to take in that word into you, darkness will just walk away, including the devil. Simply head over to YouTube at David underscore Ibiomir. New videos drop every Monday to Friday. Subscribe, like, and comment, and embrace a revolutionary encounter in your destiny. This time is not a time to waste again. Everybody cut your coat according to availability of cloth, not according to your size, but your size will be bigger than cloth. Experience the beauty of Christianity. The same God blessing me, bless you. Bless you in a higher dimension. Today is the last day you go through struggle. Tonight, give God a shout of praise. You are welcome to the day three of the April 2024 week of spiritual empowerment in the mighty name of Jesus. I know the God of this commission has blessed you with catalogs of testimonies. For those here at the Global Headquarters, please go to the success door. Pastors and officials are there to document your testimonies. The word of God declares in Genesis chapter 21 verse 1, And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. You appreciate the Lord for the understanding of your encounter with his word that will bet your desired testimony tonight. Raise your voice and appreciate the Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you glory and oh, magnify your name. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We appreciate you, Lord, from the depths of our heart for the understanding of your word coming our way tonight. And I encounter with your word that will bear everyone's testimony. We give you glory and praise for we know that by your word, everyone's desire shall be delivered to them. For you see, they shall turn to us for a testimony. We magnify Fire your name, mighty God, for your word will bet everyone's desire today. I also call upon you tonight. Be thou exalted and magnified in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is faithful. Give him glory and praise. Jesus is Lord and he deserves all of our worship. Yes, you are the Lord. The most high, yes, you are the Lord, the most high, your kingdom will never end, precious Jesus, oh yes, you are the Lord, you're the most high, yes, you are.
most wonderful name. You may please be seated in God's presence. We shall be taking thanksgiving in this section. In Isaiah chapter 60 verse 11, therefore thy gates shall be opened continually. 
Hardly thank God for opening the doors of all nations to salvation ministries as she clocks 27 and beyond. Please start to your feet. Lift your voice and appreciate God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you. We magnify your name for opening the doors of all nations to salvation ministries as she clocks 27 and beyond. We thank you. We magnify your name. Thy gates shall be open continually. There shall not be a short day nor night. We thank you for opening the doors of nations. We give you all the glory, mighty God. We celebrate your faithfulness be thou exalted in jesus most wonderful name hebrews chapter 2 verse 4 god also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and the gift of the holy ghost according to his own will he will thank god for confirming every prophetic word by david may with instant testimonies lift your voice and appreciate god father in the name of jesus christ lord we thank for confirming the words of david may with instant miracles signs and wonders we give you all the glory we magnify your name the lord confirmed the words of a servant and perform the counsel of his messengers lord we thank for always confirming the word so tell me with notable miracles, testimony, signs, and wonders. Be thou exalted, mighty God, in Jesus' most wonderful name. And finally, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. You will thank God for the all round fruitfulness, favor, blessing, and breakthroughs that genuine worshipers and salvation ministries, life and online are enjoying. Lift your voice up and appreciate God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we magnify your name for the all round fruitfulness, for the favors, for the blessings and breakthroughs, genuine worshipers and salvation ministries are enjoying life and online. We give you all the glory. Say you will bless the righteous. We favor will encompass them as with a shield. Lord, we thank you for your favors. We thank you for your blessings. Be thou exalted in Jesus' most wonderful name. I appreciate God is faithful. You may please be seated for a moment. This section we're going to God in prayers for the church salvation ministries. Hallelujah. God was speaking in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In Psalm 71, verse 21, thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Will cast out Satan from attacking salvation ministries or anything that concerns her before, during, or after our 27th anniversary? You decree total comfort for her. Stand to your feet, raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God was speaking. For now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Who will bind the devil, claim farm from any position he has taken or intend to take to attack salvation ministries or anything that concerns her before, during, and after her 27th and first celebration. Any attempt you've taken, the blood of Jesus against you, for there shall no evil before the church salvation ministries. Neither shall any plague come near dwellings, any attempt from the pit of hell to corrupt the peace, to corrupt the the rest that God has given to salvation ministries will bind the devil cleaver for, for when he come about my house because of them that pass by because of him that returns and no oppressor shall pass through anymore for a righteousness salvation ministries shall be established she shall be found oppression for it shall never come down for no weapon from the against salvation shall prosper any weapon bit of hell program against salvation ministries will bind the devil we clever when the Lord giveth quietness no devil can corrupt this we establish all and comfort divine protection for salvation ministries in Jesus' mighty name. In First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, who is sentenced to instant death. Any person or group of persons that attempts to use their positions to sponsor any attack against salvation ministries will establish the seal of touch not over her. Raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, because sentence against the works of evil men and executed speedily, the heart of the sons of men is setting them to do evil. But God was speaking, let death seize upon them, let them go that quickly to hell, for wickedness is in the world amongst them. Was sentenced to instant death. Any person or group of persons thinking, planning to use their positions, their offices to sponsor any attack against salvation ministries to corrupt the order and peace, the order and rest, God has given to salvation ministries will decree much. Like tribulation upon them, for surely they shall gather together, but not by God. Who shall not gather against salvation ministries? They shall fall for our sake. We we'll decree God's judgment, God's destruction upon the devil and his agent. For the advance of salvation ministries shall be broken to pieces 
out of heaven, the Lord shall turn upon them, for it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation upon them down to trouble. Salvation ministries will decree the seal of touch not, will decree the seal of protection over all that has the name salvation ministries. This celebration is now beyond in Jesus' mighty name. In Romans 6, verse 9b, death had no more dominion over salvation ministries. Exodus 23, verse 26b, the numbers of thy days I will fulfill, who will bind and will cast out the spirit of death from assessing salvation ministries globally through enemies. You will decree that she shall be known for longevity and totality of health. Raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, God's word declare, whatsoever we bind you on earth shall be bound in heaven. You say in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind, we cast down the spirit of death, the spirit of infirmity from assessing salvation ministries through enemies, death through negligence, death through fire outbreak, death through electrocution, death through collapse of beauty, death through food poisoning, death through manipulation, death through enemies. The Lord of Jesus against you will bind the spirit of death, we clear you for. Jesus Christ said, lose him and let him go. Anyone connected to salvation ministries, held bound, those in the bed of languishing, we lose them by the Lord of Jesus Christ, or we shall not die, we will live, to declare the words of the Lord, for the numbers of our days, God will fulfill, we establish longevity, totality of health, for all the concerns that contain the church salvation ministries, anyone that comes into salvation ministries, they will enjoy longevity, standard and vitality, in Jesus' mighty name. In Job 20, verse 27, the heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. In Matthew 15, verse 13, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up. We will command the immediate exposure and will cast out anyone positioned that the cathedral project to delay or defraud the project through enemies. You will decree that only persons with sincere intentions will be found at the site. Raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God was speaking concerning the works of my hand. Commanding me will command the immediate exposure of any human agent of the devil planted at the cathedral on twin her. We cast them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Every plant my father not planted shall be rooted out. We cast down anyone who has not planted at the cathedral on twin her. We clear the farm for the heaven shall be the iniquity. The earth will rise up against them. Anyone standing in the cell of Stambalat and Tobiah resisting the speedy completion of the project of salvation ministries, we cast the man for cause be to anyone that tried the work of God deceitfully. We clear them for in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare and declare only the persons with sincere intentions, sincere motive that will foster the advancement, the accelerated motion of the cathedral projects will be found in that site in Jesus' mighty name. In Romans chapter 9, verse 28, for he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. We'll pray that God's hand of supernatural speed and excellence shall rest upon the cathedral project for divine accomplishment. Raise your voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And God was speaking, it is the hand of the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. We'll pray in the name of Jesus Christ, let your mighty hand. Come upon the cathedral of salvation ministries for super speed and excellence on every side. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for a quick work shall the world Lord make upon the earth. Lord will pray for super accomplishments, divine speed to rest upon the cathedral of salvation ministries. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God of David, if you may, give the cathedral of salvation ministries supernatural speed, sweatless accomplishments. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of Arab. Lord will pray, let your mighty hand rest upon the cathedral of salvation ministries. Give us super speed in Jesus' mighty name. In Haggai chapter 2, verse 9, the glory of this later house shall be greater than of the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place, salvation ministries will I give peace, said the Lord of hosts. We will pray for greater glory and continuous growth for salvation ministries and our arms in this new face and beyond. Raise the voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and our flesh shall see together for the mouth of the last book. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your greater glory, your greater honor, continuously rest upon the church salvation. That 
that will foster our continuous growth, our continuous acceptance, our relevance globally in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the glory of the later house shall be greater than that of the former. Lord, we oh, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your mighty hand rest upon salvation ministries in this new phase, in this new season and beyond. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for in salvation ministries, you will feel your glory. Lord, we oh, pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your glory rest upon all that has to do with name salvation ministries, all our arms, all our institutions, all our constant salvation ministries in this new face and beyond. Let your glory rest upon her that will foster her acceptance, her relevance, her dominance globally in Jesus' mighty name. And lastly, for this section, Exodus chapter 12, verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over thee. We we'll use the we use the weapon of the blood of Jesus Christ to cover all that has to do with salvation ministries. This celebration season and beyond, exempting now from all forms of evil. Raise a voice, pray in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. We will cover all that has to do with the name salvation ministries. The blood of Jesus Christ, all that has to do with the cathedral projects. The Lord of Jesus Christ, all that has to do with salvation ministries as she celebrates this 27 years and beyond, the blood and show peace and show protection, exempt salvation ministries from anything called evil in Jesus' mighty name. He's a faithful God from the depth of your heart. Give him thanks. In Jesus' name, please be seated for a while. This section will be going to God in prayers for the presiding pastor, Dave Mayer's entire family. In James chapter 4, verse 7, he said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You resist Satan and his agents from attacking the life and family of David Ibiume this celebration season and beyond. You decree an impenetrable wall of protection round about them. Start your faith, lift up your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, it said no weapon, for the gates it shall prosper. Every attempt of the devil and his agents to attack the life, to attack the family, to attack the military of David and Pume, the celebration season and beyond. Satan the devil will come against to this hour by the blood of Jesus Christ. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous and the Lord of the wicked that get against the life, against the family, against the military of them the to attack them, to attack the lovers, to corrupt their joy, the season of celebration and beyond. Satan the devil will give you a place. The blood of Jesus is against you. For I said the Lord will be unto them. A wall of fire round about with the cree, a wall of protection, a wall of fire round about them. In Jesus' mighty name, Hebrew 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through that he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. He will pray against every agenda of hell to attack the ministry of David Ipume by introducing death in any form in his life and family. He will decree that anyone connected to him already are bound by death be loose as they enjoy long healthy lives. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, it said your covenant with death shall be this and all, and your agreement with death, it shall not stand, for this is the record that God has given to them, and that life, and that life is for the Son Jesus, will come against the spirit of death, wherever the devil want to attack David Ibiome, want to attack Peace Ibiome, want to attack David Asol, that genuine love force will the spirit of death, death through error, death through manipulation, death through accident, death through sickness, death through food poison, your spirit of death will come against you by the blood of Jesus Christ, for Christ himself has a body of death, and the spirit of death that get there against the life, against the family, against the military of David and Biome, by the blood of Jesus will destroy the spirit of death, anyone that 
around them, programmed to die. The law is good as verses. Lose him and let him go. We come as such us, be set free today by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Isaiah 43 and verse 4. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. The great God's wrath upon anyone planning evil against David, the people and family, or working against the advancement of the mandate God has given to him. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, let death sit upon them, let them go down quickly to hell, for wickedness is in a dwelling and among them, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow, so they shall be wounded with the cry, God's wrath upon anyone planning evil against David Biome, planning evil against Mr. Biome, planning evil against David Asol, that genuine love us are working against the advancement of the mandates that God has given to David Biome. Today, with the cry, God's judgment, God's vengeance, God's wrath, God's anger fall upon them. In Jesus' mighty name, John 14, verse 12, and greater works than this shall he do. You ask the Holy Spirit to release a greater measure of grace upon David Ipiome that will draw all men to the gospel of Jesus Christ he preaches as the commission enters a new face. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord. I am what I am today, by the grace of God, we are the Holy Spirit to release a greater measure of grace upon David Ibiome that will draw all men to the gospel of Jesus Christ. He preaches as the commission enter a new face, greater works than this shall he do. We have the Holy Spirit to release greater measure of grace, of anointing upon David Ibiome. In Jesus, my dream. Psalm 119, verse 46. I will speak of their testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. Luke 8, verse 39. Return to thy own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And they went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus has done unto him. Pray for the rapid spread of the testimonies of those who have had life transforming encounters through the books and messages of David Ipiomi, leading to his continuous relevance and acceptance globally. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, He said, Come see a man which told me all things ever I did. It's not just the Christ, for there's no speech, there's no language, where the voice of David is pure. It's not hard. We pray for the rapid spread of the testimonies of those who have had life transforming encounters through the books, through the messages of David is pure. Lead it to its continuous relevance as Satan will revise far and they began to publish in the couple of how great is Jesus has done. We pray for the rapid spread of the testimonies of those who have had life transforming and cut us through the books and messages of the video. Lead it to its continuous relevance as Satan and the in Jesus' mighty name, Revelation 3, verse 7. This thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it. Use the blood of Jesus Christ to clear any force contending with the continuous global open doors and acceptance. David is enjoy. You will pray that the gate of global recognition and acceptance shall remain open to him continuously. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, it said, therefore the gates shall be open continually, day and night, it shall not be yours, but the blood of Jesus Christ will clear the force, contending with the continuous global doors, and sometimes of David and Biome, when command is to be cleared by the blood of Jesus. Finally, Colossians 2.14. Blood in the hand right of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us. I took it out of the way, nailed it to his cross. Pray to blood that every lie or negative impressions against the person and ministry of David Ibiome, now or in the future. Lift your voice, pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is written, blood in the handwriting of the ordinances that was against him, which was contrary to him. But the blood of Jesus will blot us every lie or negative impressions against the person and ministry of David Ibiome. The blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus, Lord of Jesus, plot it out. I be sure God is faithful. In Jesus' mighty name, please have your seats. We are taking prayers for all journey worshippers of God in Salvation Ministries, focusing on business, career, and academic advancement. Zephaniah so 3 verse 15, the Lord has taken away thy judgment and cast out thy enemy, the king of Israel. Even the Lord is in the midst of thee, thou shalt not see evil anymore. Second Thessalonians 3 verse 16, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. You pray to destroy all satanic attacks targeted at the lives, businesses, careers, academics of journey worshippers in salvation ministries. Decree absolute protection and peace for all. Rise to your feet, pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, it said, No weapon from the pit of hell that is formed or fashioned against the new of God in salvation we shall prosper. By the blood of Jesus, we nullify, we stop any program of the devil targeted against our advancement in our business, in our careers, in our academics, any projection of hurt or destruction against our lives, our family, our loved ones. By the blood of Jesus, we destroy some program of evil in the name of Jesus. He said, There shall no evil happen to the job any program of evil, any attack of the devil to set up lust of any kind, to set up evil of any sort by the blood of Jesus we destroy them all, he said shall not stand let us shall it come to pass, any protection of hurt or destruction against our lives, against our businesses, our families our academics, by the blood of Jesus, we stop them all he said shall preserve us from all evil we declare our preservation, peace and rest run about us in Jesus mighty name Romans 8 verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. John 11 verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Pray against the sting of death and plague from attacking the lives, families, and businesses of genuine worshippers in salvation ministries. Establish divine preservation and longevity for us. Pray in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, he said, Death has been swallowed up in victory, and the covenant we have with death has been disannulled. Therefore, by the blood of Jesus, we nullify any program of death against all genuinely connected salvation misses. Any attempt of the devil to assess our lives, our families with the spirit of death, death through accident, kidnapping, shooting, poisoning, whatever be the device of the devil, by the blood of Jesus, we nullify some device of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus we shall cast out devils. By the name of Jesus, we blot out every spirit of death from getting access to any worship of God in salvation ministries. Any of us make up for death by the blood of Jesus we decree them lose. Anyone sick by the blood of Jesus we decree they are healed. In the name of Jesus we enjoy long useful life in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy 32 verse 41. If I wear my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies and will reward them that hate me. Pray that every wicked person or persons that have arrayed themselves to physically or spiritually attack the lives, businesses, careers, and academic of journey worshippers in salvation ministry shall immediately be judged. Pray in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, it said, When the Lord giveth quietness, who then can set up trouble? By the blood of Jesus, we decree God's vengeance. Rest now against any individual, any group, whosoever is thinking, planning to attack 
anyone genuinely going to have a shot misses? Oh, our loved ones, we command instant death, instant destruction upon such ones. Those that seek our soul to destroy it must go down to the lower part of the earth. Anyone planning to attack us or our loved ones, anyone planning evil against our businesses, our careers, our academics, by the blood of Jesus, we curse them with the great God's destruction. Rest upon them now in the name of Jesus. There is no enchantment against Jacob or divination against Israel. Anyone making a form of enchantment against our lives, our businesses, our marriages, our careers, by the blood of Jesus, we silence such ones and we declare and declare peace for us in Jesus' mighty name. Isaiah 45 verse 2, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gate of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. Isaiah 6 verse 11, Therefore your gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day or night. Pray to clear every barrier resisting the businesses, careers, academics, and breakthroughs of genuine worshippers in salvation ministries. Command the doors of national and international opportunities to open to us. Pray in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, for a great door, an effectual is open unto me. But there are many adversaries. By the blood of Jesus, we clear any barrier, be it human or in whatever form, that is resisting our breakthrough, our prosperity, our promotion. By the blood of Jesus, we bring down such barriers. He said, cast you up, cast you up. Take out the stumbling block and all my people. Any stumbling block to our promotion, to our lifting, whatever is standing as a hindrance to our desired testimonies, by the blood of Jesus, we blot out such resistance by the blood of Jesus. We decree the give way. He said, We shall declare a thing and it shall be established unto us. We command the heads of opportunities to open to us, both nationally, but internationally, in the name of Jesus. We declare appointment, we declare promotion for all conservation ministries in Jesus' mighty name. Joe 5 verse 12, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that hands cannot perform their enterprise. Isaiah 30 verse 21, and thy ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk here in it. You pray against the spirit of error and insensitivity from afflicting the businesses, careers, and academics of journey worshippers in salvation ministries. Pray to be guided by the Holy Spirit always. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, yeah, we buy know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In the name of Jesus, we shall cast out devils. By the name of Jesus, we buy that we cast out any spirit of error or insensitivity from assessing all generous God in salvation ministries. Any attempt of the devil to cause us to make any wrong decision that will be detrimental to our businesses, to our careers, or our academics. By the blood of Jesus, we buy and cast out some devices in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Holy Spirit, we ask that you guide us to make right choices at all time in the name of Jesus. Last thing in this session, Zechariah 9 verse 14, and the Lord shall be seen over thee, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. Use the blood of Jesus Christ to end all form of evil program against genuine worshippers and everyone coming from far and near for the 27th anniversary celebration. Pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over thee by the blood of Jesus. We bind and cast out any program evil against all worship of God in salvation places. Any program evil against those coming and returning for the anniversary. By the blood of Jesus, we nullify such work of the devil. So the blood of Jesus, we get better things than the blood of Abel. By the blood of Jesus, we declare our preservation, we decree peace, we decree quietness for all. God's salvation ministries in the name of Jesus. I appreciate the Lord, his worthy. Father, we thank you for answers to prayers in Jesus' mighty name. With a big hand clap to Jesus, you may please be comfortably seated in God's presence. In Papa's book, Wisdom Quote, Volume 2, Papa said, what will make you and sustain you is inside you. Jam your hands to the glory of God as we invite the following testifiers to share their testimonies. Rhoda, John, Io, Haggai, Ayo, while they come, listen to the following information. A very warm welcome to April 2024 Week of Spiritual Empowerment Service. Salvation Word of Life Bible Institute presents her online Bible school for global e-learners. It enables you to learn at your own time and schedule for the month of May 2024. For more details, visit swobi.org or call any of the numbers as displayed. 
visit the Knowledge Center or e-store at smhostore.com immediately after the service to obtain today's message and all the messages in hard copy and flash drive or subscribe to our monthly collections on MP3 and DVD. Amongst the materials are message, Praise for Greater Exploits, March 2024, Week of Spiritual Empowerment, Glory 2024, MP3 and DVD. Books, The Wonders of Wisdom, Wisdom for Creativity, Wisdom for Family Peace, Wisdom Quotes Volume 1, Wisdom Quotes Volume 2, Wisdom to See Ahead, Winning with Ease and the Winning Mentality. Be committed to raising a godly generation by acquiring the right knowledge for godliness and excellence that will make you proud as a parent or guardian. Visit the Wisdom Bank for the definite tools or call the number as displayed. To commit to kingdom advancement and expansion, please refer to the detailed information on your screen. Also for profit offerings, send your seed to the account as displayed. Those desiring to build worship centers in any of the categories displayed on the screen, please call the Global Missions Office on any of the numbers as displayed. As part of our Children's Day Celebration 2024, the Children Ministry announces Leading Lights Essay Competition for children between ages 5 to 11. Parents and guardians are to visit smhos.org slash leading lights to register their children or pick the forms at their various branches. Registration ends on Sunday, 14th April, 2024. For further inquiries, call any of the numbers as displayed. Okma International Academy in Fan Junior College announces admission into pre-kindergarten primary 1 to 5 and year 7 JSS 1 for 2024-2025 academic session. Applicants are to fill and submit an online application form at okma.org.ng. Note, applicants for the college must be 10 years by September 2024. For entrance examination dates, venues, and all the details, please visit okma.org.ng or call any of the numbers as displayed. There will be service group prayers this Friday, 12th of April 2024, for Decoration Unit, Special Intelligent Unit, and Safety Unit at the Kingdom Arena for those at the Global Headquarters at 5 p.m. All concerns should fast before coming. Those intending to wed in Salvation Ministries should kindly pick up marriage form at the special care stand. Fill and submit to your brand pastor or at the reception for those at the Global Headquarters at least six months before your wedding month. You can also fill and submit online via smhos.org slash marriage. For inquiries, please call any of the numbers displayed on the screen. There will be online foundation class for new converts and believers this Saturday by 9 a.m. The class is designed to give you stability in your Christian adventure and will be transmitted in German, Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Italian languages via smhos.org. However, the class will also be viewed via Salvation TV, YouTube, Facebook, and X. Meanwhile, there will be live class at the Global Headquarters and all the branches by 8 a.m. Ensure you join and make available your writing materials. To receive daily prayers, prophecies, and wisdom quotes for living, like, share, and follow David Ibiomi on Facebook, at David Ibiomi on Instagram, at David underscore Ibiomi, X at David Ibiomi. Enjoy yourself in God's presence. God bless you. Your name and your testimony. My name is Haggai Ayuwo, lead pastor of Great Gospel by International Church. Excuse me. <coughs> My testimony is on healing and uh, financial breakthrough. In the year 2021, I was led to sow a seed. And thereafter, as the year runs, I had a fatal accident that led to me not seeing from my left eyes. I couldn't see for six months. And every hospital we went to, they told us retinal detachment. I was bleeding from the macula into the vitreous. And God led, us to, led me to sow again. And thereafter, I went in for the surgery, holding on to God's word from this altar. And the God of Papa David Ibiomir gave us great deliverance. As they did the surgery, the doctors discovered that it was like something was shielding the rectina. And that was, and they confirmed that this is a miracle. And I knew it was the grace from this place that restored. I wouldn't have seen at all, but God made it happen. And last, uh, last month, week of spiritual empowerment, day two, I went in for the last phase of the surgery, and everything is successful. Now I can see very clear to the glory of God. And secondly, this year, January 1st, we came as a ministry, and we saw our first fruit. And also, during the glory reign, I made the sacrifice, glory reign sacrifice, 
and thereafter it has been from one level of financial breakthrough to another such that we have never seen before. I come to return all the glory to the God of my father, David Tibiome. Your name and your testimony, ma. Church, praise the Lord. My name is Aroda John. You. That's, I came into this commission shortly before the establishment of the satellite church. And God has been very good to me. I worked with the cancer of the Polytechnic for 28 years and retired as an assistant chief librarian. Then, and then I had a livestock God asked me to keep from this altar. And I kept the altar. And Papa said, foreigners will work for us. And from Kutunu, from Togo, all around, workers came and worked, and it was very successful till now. Right now, I have rentables, structures to rent for fowls, for fish, like that. It has been on like that, and precisely today, today is 11th April, 2024, I am 70 years. Shall we invite officials to read testimonies from worshippers across the globe? Salvation Ministries Church, number 29, Ayebame Street, Ijebuode, Ogun State, Nigeria. From Samuel Olasukuni, during one of the services under God's servant's teaching, I was led to increase my worship offering, and without a doubt in my heart, I immediately obeyed and changed my offering from 1,000 naira to 5,000 naira per service. To God be the glory, I have seen a very big shift in my finances and my strength has been supernaturally restored. Although I am 58 years old, I feel as strong as a 30-year-old. I praise, all praise be to God Almighty. Indeed, it pays to be obedient. Salvation Ministries Church, number 21 on Pogo Road, Transamadi Industrial Layout, Fort Harcourt River State, Nigeria. From Elizabeth Obi. During Glory Reign 2024, I desired a miracle from God in my life and that of my family members, specifically for miracle marriages and peace in my community that had suffered a terrible crisis. On Sunday, 31st March 2024, my sister did her traditional wedding, which ended the crisis in my community. I return all glory to God for answering my prayer and bringing peace to my community. Hallelujah. Salvation Ministries Church. Goshen Center, New Road, After Rail, Onkwan, BJ, Gonigora, Kaduna State, Nigeria. From Samuel, Ajegun, I have been out of job for over one year and all efforts to get a new one had not been positive. On Thursday, 4th April 2024, God's made some declaration and caused the root of every limitation in our lives and I claimed it at faith. By 11 p.m. of the same day, I received an email for a federal government job interview scheduled in Abuja on Saturday, 6 April 2024. On Friday, 5th April 2024, I met my branch pastor. He prayed with me and he told me the grace of the commission would grant me favor and I will get the job. To God be the glory, the interview was successful and I got the job. Thank you, Lord. Salvation Ministries Church, Afikpo Ebo in State, Nigeria, from Isui Imano. I lost my national identity card on 15 March 2024 while returning home from work. And for the past three weeks, I've been looking for it. I joined the Global Mass Evangelism for April 2024 week of spiritual empowerment. And during the evangelism exercise, a bike man rode up to me, stopped his motorbike, looked at me in the face, and handed over the missing ID card to me. I am so overwhelmed. I give all glory to God Almighty. God is the doer of this great testimony. Shall we rise to our feet and return the glory back to him? Faithful God, to you we return all the glory. You are the doer. Thank you, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ. You may please have your seats as a choir ministers.
heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. We are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising and falling at your word and we are responding to your Book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32. Bible says, The be part, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. But those who come together and associate with the wise will do greater exploits. I see you do greater exploits in the name of Jesus. In our midst this evening, we have Bishop Daniel Onoa of the Oasis of Love Chapel International Port We also have Bishop, Doctor, and Pastor Mrs. E. N. Odusin of the Avila Goodness Ministries, Port Harcourt. Bishop, 
Chuka Agwegu of Grace and Progress Family Church at Saba Delta State. So I just wish I can see you. Bishop Alfred Femi Martins of Higher Grounds Family Church, Port Harcourt. Bishop Dr. and Reverend Mrs. Marvin Jack of Gospel Faith Global Ministries, Port Harcourt. Pastor Richard Apia of Water of Life Ministries, Accra, Ghana. Pastor Wisdom Akin Yosoyi of the Triumphant Peoples International Church, Yenagua, Bayasa State. Pastor Akin Rotunwa of the Christ Realm Gospel Center, Yenagua, Bayasa State. Pastor Mrs. Bethel Onoa of Potter's Ark Assembly, Abba, Abia State. Pastor Israel Olushore of Living Light Church International, Lekki, Lagos State. Pastor Okoro Samuel of Living Triumph Ministries, Lagos. God bless you. Pastor Joy Nkiruka Ileberi of World Freedom Church, Yenagua, Bayasa State. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Agape Celestine of Living Act Covenant Ministries, Port Harcourt. Pastor Tams Wisdom Akuruma of the Fruitful Garden Ministries, Port Harcourt. Pastor Nkem Enoch Ejim Chuku of Lighthouse Family Church, FCT Abuja. Pastor Haggai Ayowo of Great Gospel Power International Church, Port Harcourt. And we also have members and pastors and bishops all over the world. The Lord bless you. We thank God for the Lord is worthy. Please be on your feet as we worship the Lord tonight. Glory to God. All heavens declare The glory of the risen Lord Who can compare With the beauty of Thank you. 
shall lift our hands to heaven. Let's magnify the King of all kings and glorify his name forever. Let us give him praise and glory. No one is like him forever is on the throne. It's worthy to be exalted. It's worthy to be magnified. It's worthy to be glorified. Bless his name forever. We give him praise and glory. We exalt him because no one is like him forever. You're the throne. We worship and adore you. We give you all of the glory. And Jesus most wonderful name we have worshipped. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. good to you from the depth of your heart just lift those hands to heaven and just tell him thank you from the depth of your heart if God has been good to you tell him thank you all my life you have been faithful even when we are not faithful you are still faithful open your mouth and just tell him you love him and thank him all our lives you have been faithful mighty God even when we are not faithful, you are still faithful. Open your mind, you've been good to us in all ramifications. Open your mind and just thank him and Lord, show that you love him. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we have given thanks. Lord, on this third day, speak to us yourself. Reveal your word to each one at the level they will understand. Spirit of God, breathe your breath upon the word of God. Let healings take place. Let people be delivered. Amen. Let our prayers be set free. Amen. Let Jesus alone be glorified. Amen. Sanctify every word I will speak this moment. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let someone expecting a testimony say, Amen. Give Jesus a big hand. You may be seated. Why I didn't take time to pray so much for the sick? Tomorrow we have a special miracle service online. So all the sick, tell them to hook up so we can save time. 
Tomorrow they are going to be a special miracle service for healing and other areas of life. Is that through? At 6 p.m., make sure you hook up online. Tell the entire world to be a path. It's going to be a special one at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Online, please. I said what? So don't come to church tomorrow. Saturday is the big one. We will be thanking God for his faithfulness. At 4 p.m. in all our churches. At the close of the service, I will tell you details. Yesterday we talked about winning mentality. How many of you now have winning mentality? Your mentality has been adjusted? Are you still complaining? You know you can make it? Glory to God. The theme is wisdom for greater exploits. And today we'll be looking at utilizing opportunities. Utilizing opportunities. We're talking about wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to make a difference in your society. Wisdom is simply knowing what to do and doing it. It's knowing the way to go and getting there. It's knowing the truth and applying it to triumph. That's wisdom. The world utilize means to make practical and effective use of a thing. I say utilize means to make practical and effective use of a thing. It is a willingness to use proper means to achieve a desired end. Opportunity is a situation that makes it possible to do something, achieve a goal you set for yourself. It's a situation that makes you pos- make it possible, that makes it possible f- to do something. That's opportunity. And I said wisdom is simply knowing from God's word which way to go and how to handle situations to make them produce desired results. I said wisdom is knowing from God's word which way to go and how to handle situations to make them produce desired results. Simply, wisdom is knowing how to make life profitable. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, it says wisdom is the principal thing Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. If wisdom is that important, then don't play down on wisdom. Even the Bible describes Jesus as the power and the wisdom of God. But many just talk about power, they don't ever talk about wisdom. You only hear people talk about wisdom. They say Jesus, in comprehension, is simply Wisdom and power. So the power of God is the soul. If you take, if you rest on power, you rest on fifty percent. The two must be together. Shout hallelujah! We are talking about opportunities. We are presented with opportunities every day for greatness. Every day of our life. Great men and women trace their greatness to opportunities utilized. Every great man, every great man will tell you an opportunity came like this and I utilized it. May you utilize the next one coming your way in the name of Jesus. God gives every one of us opportunities. Everyone. But opportunities are usually dressed in coveralls. The reason many people miss opportunities is because often they come covered with coverall. What the common man calls overall, but coverall. Is that true? They are enveloped. They are covered. Most times you don't see them. 
I pray your eyes will open today in the name of Jesus. While studying, I read a story from a book during real life story. A true story. During the Second World War, World War II, a woman worked in a delicacy in Los Angeles, California. That is delicacy a shop that says ready to eat food. This woman was a hard worker. The owner of the shop said to her, customers are constantly asking for pile. Piles, they were not selling piles, so they were asking always if they called, they said, you put her piles. So he asked her if she could prepare piles in addition to her assignment. She could have given excuses because she was already loaded with so much work. She was the one cleaning, she was the one doing so many things. But the nurse said, can you prepare pies? They always come to ask us for pies and we don't do pies here. So she accepted the responsibility. She started and customers liked what she was doing so the place was rushed with that. And then later when she discovered that she can make pies, she now had to start her own pile business. It was hard at first, very hard for her. She almost gave up. But the husband encouraged her not to give up since she was good in making pies. He said to her, he, he resigned, in fact. The husband had to quit his job and join her, and the entire family got involved in her pile business. In 1964, her name is called Maria Callender. She had 115 pile shops or restaurants in 14 states of the United States of America. In 1986, Ramada Inn Incorporated bought her pile business for approximately $90 million. You may say, I wish I had such an opportunity. <laughs> but you've had many opportunities without utilizing them. Many. Many have come past. God speaking in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, it said, for a great door, look at that scripture, shall we together? For a great door, an effectual is open what? There's a command there. That means everybody has had an open door. But there are many adversaries. We always think of it in warfare. God said, everybody has had an open door. But they come with so many challenges and problems that you, you just say, I beg, I can't face them. There is nobody who has not had an open door. Not one. He said, I said before you, look at it. For a great and effectual door is open unto me. There's a command there. That means every one of us has had opportunities that we do not utilize. And there are many what? Things that will make you give up. That's the meaning. Not always think that problems are always to kill you. Now, here this on Yami, well, there's this story of the Chinese bamboo. Some of you have heard the story before. I pray the next opportunity you will not miss it. Yeah. The Chinese bamboo, for the first four years, with watering daily, every day, the growth will be very minimal. It will be so insignificant. For four years, it will not see, it seems as if anything is happening to that Chinese bamboo for four years. However, in the fifth year, the Chinese bamboo grows to 90 feet. For four years, maximum is five feet. It won't go beyond that for four years. The challenge with many of us is that we want the fifth year resource without the four years application. Did you hear that? We want resource. Pa, 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 pa. Yet, we don't want to follow the process. I said we want the fifth year worth resource without the four years application. There was a man called Goliath. I spoke about him yesterday. In my studies, I discovered that problems are not really problems. They're opportunities. Many of us, when problems come, the first thing we do is I will bind this devil. Cast this boss out of my office. It's actually an opportunity for you to be lifted. 
When Goliath came, everybody saw Goliath as a problem. David saw him as an opportunity. <laughs> The whole Israel saw Goliath as a problem. Only David saw him as what? Opportunity for a crown. And he utilized it. You utilize your own. In life, fortune is closer than misfortune. You become a victim of misfortune when you miss your opportunity knocking at your door. When you miss the opportunity knocking, then misfortune starts. When you are conscious, it becomes magnetic. I pray today you will not miss any opportunity that God will bring your way. Yeah. Opportunity is the promoter and agent of change. Every change it's a result of utilized opportunity. Every change. Miracle marriages, they come by opportunities. They come by what? Promotions in the office, they come by opportunities. Change of jobs, liftings in career and business, all respond to various opportunities. Various what? You are asking God for marriage? <laughs> God has brought many husbands and wives past you. Am I talking? But you never utilize the opportunity. A young man stood by you and said, can I get water? He looked at him like this. This one. And you don't know what he carries. Life story in this town a young man wanted to marry a young lady, life story, they told me. And he decided to go to an office. She has heard his name, but she has never seen him in person. Top young man. He knows that she doesn't know him in person. So he wore jeans and t-shirt. And had no plan, he just let him go to the office so that he can know who she is. Somebody has talked so much. So he went there. The first person he met was she. Life story. I said, please, I'm looking for this person. She walked past him. She said, you can ask the secretary. She will direct you. <laughs> he said, this one, I will not marry her. Lie, lie. <laughs> By the time she realized that as the young man, they were telling her of, it was late. And who she's married to today cannot be compared to him. She saw the opportunity passed. Boss was on jeans and t-shirt. <laughs> opportunity come covered. Opportunity come what? I'll tell you a story that may be very touching. My wife was not the one I was first proposed to. No, don't think so. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'll tell you a life story. I told a young girl I'll marry you. She said, <laughs> you for Bible school. You go feed, feed me. That was the exact language she used. She's a member of this church. She said, you, Bible school, you go feed me. The opportunity passed. Another woman saw a man with a great future. <laughs> opportunity come every day. But they are in overall coverall. I pray God will open your eyes to see the next opportunity. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. Opportunity, I said, is God's design to ensure a change of position for you. Opportunities are endless. They are what? They're endless. Every greatness is a product of opportunities utilized. Missing opportunities is missing chances of advancement. People don't really lack opportunities, they're only blind to them. 
Do you hear me? People don't what? Don't really lack opportunity. They are only what? Blind to see opportunities. The next, I repeat with authority, the next opportunity you will not miss it. Some of you, the man to employ you stood before you. Yet you could not greet him. Are you getting me now? The man passed. The man God wants to use for the next phase of your life is just by your corner. Yet you don't know what to do. Opportunities come every day. They said, I said, a great and effectual door is open unto me. They are not closed. But for every opportunity, something will cover it. It's your ability to design. Blessings that come with utilizing opportunities. Let me tell you. Blessings that what? Come with utilizing opportunities. What are the blessings that come with utilizing opportunities? Number one. Opportunities lifts and elevates you to a higher level. Opportunities lifts and elevates you to what? A higher level. A typical example is David and Goliath. In First Samuel 17, that was where David was lifted. Someone will be lifted in the name of Jesus. The ten spies, we spoke so much about them yesterday, saw giants as obstacles, while Caleb and Joshua saw them as what? Opportunities to win crowns of victory. Numbers 13. Yesterday we talked so much about them. They were lifted by getting what? Opportunity and utilizing it. So here. Your lifting is coming. Number two. Opportunity brings you before great men. Opportunity brings you before what? <laughs> In Genesis 41, you all know the story of Pharaoh and Joseph? Pharaoh said, there's no one as wise as you are. True? An opportunity came for Joseph. For who? For Joseph. You remember he was in prison. Opportunity can meet you anywhere. You can be in the worst place and opportunity come there. It was in prison when the opportunity came. It was not in the palace. It was where? It was in prison the opportunity came. But if Joseph was smart enough to recognize it. Before I will go for what I'm teaching for, I will tell you, Joseph did not just appear. He prepared for the opportunity. Is that true? Towards my closing, I will shout out. And he utilized it very well. He did what? And then we all know the story of Joseph. In New Testament, Joseph will be born today. We all know David and Jonathan in 1 Samuel 18, 1 to 4. An opportunity came where two of them became friends. They were tired, soul tired. And it was Jonathan who mentioned David to his father. And Saul invited him. Is that true? And then he got access to the palace and from there on we all know an opportunity came for me to meet David Oedipo and that was where my life took a new turn I made sure I utilized the word opportunity there are people you meet your destiny turns they won't give you money Bishop Oedipo has not given me the first 1,000 I won't even take even if he gives me. But I saw opportunity that will make me to rise. Are you getting me, sir? Are you hearing me? There are people you meet like this in life, your life turn. So if you just meeting me, is what changed your life? Through? May you never miss your own. It brings you before what? Great people. Number three, 
Opportunity utilized guarantees prosperity. Opportunity utilized guarantees prosperity. Paul was speaking in Philippians 4. He said, for ye lacked opportunity. In verse 10 precisely. You lack what? He said, the reason why you are not prosperous, you lack what? Opportunity. In verse 15 he said, giving and receiving. Giving and what? Receiving. Let me say this to you. Every God ordained project is a covenant opportunity that creates a prosperous future for you. When you lack opportunity, you remain in lack. If you are in any church where you lack something to sow, you will remain poor. Listen. Utilizing opportunity opens your heaven. Opens your what? Many have testified as they gave to the cathedral. Poof, that was an opportunity for them to prosper. Is that true? Some pests are lifted today because of the cathedral project. Now, there's always an opportunity for you to plant a seed in order to reap a bountiful harvest. Now, here where my prosperity started. When Bible school and Winners Chapel, many of them are here with me, including my wife, in Bible school. And in 1996, an opportunity came. Bishop Edebo came in Breakthrough Seminar, we used to call it Breakthrough Seminar, and said, the church will buy our first aircraft for a project we call AGIP, African Gospel Invasion Program. That going from country to country, the church need to have an aircraft to be able to go from different countries because if we are waiting for commercial flight, it will not be possible. So the Africa can be invaded with the gospel. That was my first opportunity in Bible school. I said, God, what do I give now? Hey! I was in Bible school, so physical cash was not there. So I packed all my electronics and so. <laughs> as I was dropping my electronics, as I drove back, he said, you will never beg in ministry. That was where I broke the backbone of poverty. That opportunity came to all of us in Bible school, but I utilized it. Do you understand how it is? Are you getting me, sir? It went past. In fact, the young man who sat by my side made a statement. He said, how can Bishop say we should buy aircraft when people are souls are perishing? I said, you have a wrong heart. I said, your heart is wrong. That guy is poor today. There are people who even this church scorn things. They say, is it, who are seated here now? They say, is it cathedral we need now? What do you need? <laughs> All this crowd, where do you want to keep them? If you don't need Do you know that on Saturday we are thinking of how people will see them? So where do you want to keep them? Is it cathedral is not what we need? There are people in this church, oh, the opportunity has come now for them to become, and watch them, they are poor. Watch them, they are poor, poor, poor. What we need now is salvation. There's people you save for salvation. Will they be under three? We don't need cathedral. When people are not eating, if they give you food today, what of tomorrow? The one they give you food that you match yourself and died. Has this solved the problem? Look, if you lack. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So utilize every opportunity to sow towards the advancement of God's kingdom and see if you will not prosper. If you know what? Every poor man did not utilize an opportunity. You are not poor because you're poor. You are poor because you do not utilize what? Opportunity to give. It came. Opportunity what? Came, but you didn't give. That's why opportunities come every day. Are you getting me? Number four. 
Opportunity to serve guarantees promotion. Opportunity to what? Serve guarantees what? Promotion. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Job 36 verse 11. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything shall be what? There are people no matter what you preach, they will never win souls. But they forget that their promotion is in the opportunity to win souls. There was a man called Nehemiah. This young man saw an opportunity to repair the walls of Jerusalem and ended up a leader. Ended up what? His promotion came when he repaired the walls of Jerusalem. Somebody will end up a leader. Every man's promotion is tied to an opportunity somewhere that you utilize. And I'll share with you what happens when opportunities are not utilized. What what happens when opportunities are not what utilized? A. It gives room for another to take your place. It gives room for another to take what? Your place. Who was on the throne when King David, when Goliath was insulting Israel? King Saul. King Saul refused to respond to the opportunity to fight Goliath because kings go to war at that time. And he also refused to obey God completely. So he created room for David to be king. <laughs> Did you hear me at all? Hmm? If you read 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 1 Samuel 17, you see the two stories. He refused to obey God, he refused to fight Goliath, and then the opportunity came for who? David. Another story in the Bible that opportunity when you don't utilize, a woman called, you, everybody talk about Queen Esther, Queen Esther, Queen Esther. Queen Esther was not the first queen. There was a queen called Vashti. Vashti was invited by the king. She ignored the request of the king. It was at that point, the king said, call me another virgin. Esther chapter 2 verse 17. Let me show you. So when opportunity comes and you are arrogant, it will leave you. And the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of who? Read the beginning. Vashti was invited but she was so arrogant. That's how some of you are. You are so arrogant. I want to talk to a young lady. Who are you? Is it because of church you talk to me? And then tomorrow the young man marries. And you watch on television. They say, well, this is the MD of the place. Say, that young man proposed to me. You now start fighting the wife. We don't find trouble. <laughs> but you look down on him. Vashti was who was there. She had opportunity to be queen. But she ignored the request of the king. Is that true? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some stories are pathetic. But something happened. I will speak in a bit parable. Two men were to contest for an office. One was coming to church here, half member. One does not come. In fact, it's Akataka. An opportunity presented itself. 
So, it sent me a message. I said, see me on Wednesday. He did not come. I repeated again. I said, see me on Wednesday. He ignored my, my message. Then the Akataka walked in. I said, sir, I know you, exact verbatim words. I know you don't like me. They've told you so many bad stories about me. But I know you, this is the word you use. I know you're a man of God. I know that one. And I know if you pray for me, I'll get it. The one who was in the house ignored my test. So the crown left his head to this other one. Because the other one value my anointing. The anointing you don't value cannot enhance you. There are people living in this church. Be blessed. They say, Me too, I can say, Be blessed. Mr. Yes. I can say it. What is so much about you? That's why you don't have one testimony. Two of us are not equal. That you carry my, not even, I'll be mad to think me and Oedek are equal. That's that. Oedek Paul will be also, he won't do it to think that him and Oedek are equal. No, everybody has what? Sugar size. I know my father is so humble that he respects his fathers. And I'm humble, I respect him. There is no result that will make you to say your father is not your son. No matter how well you are, your father is your father. Even if your father is in the village, he's your father. Opportunity will come when your father will say, my son, I bless you. You can't bless your father. Even in biological, you can't bless your father. Hope you know. Honor thy father, thy mother. This is honor thy son. <laughs> that may be well with you. So it's your father who is a village man, a fisherman, and a farmer who will say, my God bless you. You can't tell your father, Papa, God bless you. No way. But many of us lack... We don't understand when opportunity comes. Say so here. Shout a better hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Whatever robs you from utilizing opportunity has robbed you of your future. Do you hear me? I said, whatever robs you from utilizing any opportunity has robbed you of your worth? Future. Opportunity once lost may never be recovered. May never be regained because yesterday is gone. Yesterday is what? It's gone. It's not going to be a long message. I'm almost done. Now, opportunities are everywhere. Are what? Everywhere. How to identify opportunities? Because they're everywhere. Even now, as you came to church, opportunity passed you. Or a robot said, miracles walk past us every day. How to identify opportunities? How to do what? Number one, where there is problem. Where there's a, anywhere there is a problem, there's an opportunity. Anywhere you see problem, there's what? Just the opportunity is there when you see problem. How do you do? Be the one to profile solution. Moses solved the problem of slavery. True? That was opportunity. That was what? Opportunity. He solved the problem and then it became... The greatest leader in the Old Testament. Is that true? Esther solved the problem of genocide for the Jews. She became a queen. Is that true? David solved the problem of who? Goliath. He became a king. Jesus solved the problem of sin and death. The greatest problem of humanity ever faced. That's why we are still talking about him today. Which problem are you solving? There's a problem somewhere. That's an opportunity for you to be great. Are you getting me, sir? So we ask yourself, which problem are you solving? Life is all about solving problems. If you solve more problems, you have more opportunities to make it in life. So here. Anywhere there 
is problem. There's an opportunity for somebody to rise. Say so here. Mm. I pray today the Holy Ghost will open your eyes to see problems. Yeah. You know what the problem? When we see problems, we pray against problems. Instead of thinking of how to solve them. You know, if Goliath was to be here now, you would have prayed against Goliath. He said, Goliath, don't appear again. God, you know, God gives the problems to lift you. The economic challenge in Nigeria today is actually for people to prosper. My wife showed me something. When she sees something, she has my research officer of social media and internet. Before service, she ran up to me. She said, see, see, see a young man here. A young man here. Because of what you teach. People hear your teaching. I said, what is it? A young man has a fish farm, a medical doctor, has a fish farm in Jaws. There's multi-million. It has about two million fishes. You know why he put it in Jaws? In the north, no fish. They have meat. So fish farm in the north is very lucrative. And he's a multi-millionaire. Somebody is saying, you can't get fish here. You can't get fish here. You can't get fish here. Somebody say, then this is money. This is what? But uh, somebody is busy complaining. No fish in the north. No fish. You are busy analyzing problems. All his mates are traveling overseas. He has a fish farm. Do you understand? Yes, mm. So, solve problems. Because there's an opportunity for you to be blessed. I will talk to that one to pastors. I won't teach you that one. It's not necessary. But most, today, I, I meditate a lot. I was awake till 6 a.m. past 6 before I slept this morning. I had to walk from 90 this morning. In my deep meditation, he said, any pastor looking for money is stupid. When I, I was shocked. I was, he said, every pastor is rich. I said, how? He said, including pastors working on their founders. He said, all they need to do is to solve, find their area of strength and solve problems. I said, how? He said, if a pastor is very good in marital settlement, everybody has the marriage problem will go to him. And when he settles the marriage of a rich man, any money he's looking for, they will give him. If you look at his strength, if a pastor is very good in healing, no matter the counseling, everybody sick will go to him, even if it's under somebody, for sickness to be healed. And when they are healed, they will say, Pastor, God bless. There's no man blessed of God that will not honor the man. So instead of pastors going to look at solving problems, they are busy running after money. Some even resigned to go for to politics. Full time. But one of them came to me and said, I want to politics. I said, sure, I said, God call you. <laughs> what is he going to policy for? And it kills. Because if God truly calls him, he goes to money, he won't get it. I don't mean part time, full time. So, no pastor should bother. What am I doing for you now? Am I not solving your problem? I'm solving spiritual problems. Am I lacking? You saw to my to me left and right, true? Do I ask you? No, you saw. Because I solved your word. Even when people say, don't give to your pastor, you say, shut up. Who told you I won't give you? <laughs> because some people even tell you, are you okay to be given to your pastor? They say, you, you don't know. This man is solving my spiritual problem. So find the problem we are created to solve and money will come. Everybody, every human has a problem to solve. Why do I give money to my wife? She solves problem. My wife prays five times a day, minimum four. She prays, I will tell you, early morning prayer. She prays morning. Then she prays the seven o'clock prayer we pray online. Then she pray, comes to join you at 12 o'clock. She prays in the evening for the family. And then if they, she has online two times a week, so minimum in a day she prays is four. Then some days five. Every day. And every prayer, she has one prayer point for me. One, two. So she doesn't need to ask me. Because I hear her. Oh God, my husband will not die. (laughs) 
Are you hearing me now? So even if you wish me dead, my wife said, my husband will go die. So she doesn't need to beg me. I said, take. Even if you don't want, take. What you solving? Problem. Which problem are you solving for your husband? You call it like from morning to night. <laughs> when he's coming home from work, he's afraid. He said, no, they give me something. When you go give me something, where they make him fear? <laughs> There's no man you give peace that will not give you money. And the woman yelling at me? He said, a wicked man. You know wicked. Every day you quarrel up. Every day you quarrel up. Before you will even enter your door, you have started to quarrel. So the man even to come home is afraid. So when he closes from work, he stays three hours extra. He said, must be go close. He said, I see the work. <laughs> you know why? So when he gets home, as he's getting home, he will eat and just sleep. If you see a man like that, the home is not conducive. No man whose home is conducive that will not come home early. Any home, the man does not come home. The woman has not made the home conducive. Because women determine the atmosphere of a home. Are the women hearing me? Make your home an environment where he will not find it anywhere else. So here. You are born to solve problems. Each person is to solve what? Problems. So identify the problem you are born. It may be a talent. It may be a gift. It may be something. There are pastors amongst us who today, if they talk about marriage, you will fold your hands. So every marital issue, you should solve the problem there. They will travel from one city to meet him. And that's where his resources will come from. Some the amount is very sweet that even if you're depressed, when they talk to you, you'll be happy. So find your strength. So it's not the salary they pay, pastor, that means how he will be rich. Is a problem a source for the people. Eh. And there's no pastor who is not gifted with one area or the other. Don't try to be like John. John must not be like Peter. Each one has his own strength. Peter was different. Peter was boldness. John was love. James was wisdom. Yes, each one go to your own area and sharpen that area. So whoever has problem in that area looks for you. Even if you're working under somebody. So it's not salary that determines your lifting. It's your, what you utilize, the problems you solve for people. Is that clear? Who number two. How many of you will solve problems? Will you solve problems? If they bring people to your office now, wouldn't you say, no, 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 this man is overlaboring me. Let me say to all of you working. When they give you, your boss give you extra work, do it. If you solve it, the boss gives you. There are some offices, you see, a boss will keep calling a particular person. A particular person. That does not mean that you, no, someone say, he doesn't like us. No, that person is the person who is able to solve his problem. It's every time he likes to call you, so he doesn't like to call you. He will call you and he will shout. He will correct you. I told a young man today, I say, you have worked with me for many years. Anytime you come around, I will be shouting. I say, every time you come around, I shout. I have not shouted since morning. Since the morning he entered, I shouted. <laughs> Is he hearing me? I said, this morning, I've not shouted. You entered here and I've, I've shouted. I said, please leave me to rest. Two. How to identify opportunities. When you are faced with challenges. When you're faced with what? Challenges. When you are faced with what? Challenges. No opportunity is void of challenges. I said before you what? A great and effectual is open up. There are many what? Masters. Face it and come out victorious. A man called Sir Edmund Hillary got to the, to the summit of Mount Everest. But he faced challenges. You know what he said? He said, it's not the mount you conquered. We conquered ourselves first. So when you see challenges, you see what? How did I get into a healing ministry? It was HIV. I was not into healing this way until HIV came. When HIV ravaged the world, and I heard a pastor who stood by my side say, he will never pray for anybody with HIV. He will not try it. 
I said, sir, what did you say? He said, pastor, don't lay hands on them or me, I won't try it. I said, then if we don't pray, who will be the ones to pray? At that point, people were dying. No cure, no neutral drugs. Now they've already found permanent cure to it. Are you aware that science has found permanent cure to HIV? Then no, no drug of any kind. HIV, you're gone. And I said, God, what is it? What do we do? In the process, he said, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. And when light came on that scripture, everyone which ever I prayed for from that, they got healed. That was how I stumbled into. The challenge was there. Are you getting me now? It created an opportunity for me to get into healing ministry. So here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So when there's a challenge before you, it's an opportunity for you to be lifted. Don't dodge challenges. Face challenges. It gives you what? If there was no challenge of Goliath, there wouldn't have been a King David. Check every wealthy man. There was one challenge or the other they faced to come out. Is that true? Some became rich when their parents died early. Some became rich when nobody gave them chance. Are you getting me? May you never dodge from challenges. The beauty of the orange is not in the orange, it's when it is squeezed. That's what we call orange juice. So when challenges come, they will squeeze you, but the juice in you will come out. Are you getting me? Mm. Can I tell you how this church grew? There was a challenge of a governor who threatened my life. It threatened me that I knew it was how to destroy himself. So I fasted the way I've never fasted. I prayed the way I've not prayed. <laughs> I had to move to another realm supernaturally to subdue the man and his forces. And church did like there was a challenge of militancy in Niger Delta of Nigeria, where militants terrorized the whole of the Niger Delta region. Churches were closing and running away to other places. And I said, no, if we run away, what will be the fate of the people? And I stood there to say, no, these guys must stop with their arms. And church did like this. So the challenge before you is to lift you. It's not to kill you. Are you getting me? Running from challenges does not remove the challenges. You come back to meet them. Mm? You are not employed. You run to another country. Who told you you employed there? What guarantees? <laughs> Face the word. Face it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Number three. Roman figure. Dear the impossible and get the incredible. Heart and the opportunities, they are the worth. Something people have said is impossible, do it. Before Peter walked on water, outside Jesus, no mortal man has walked on water. In Matthew 14 29, Peter, if, the Bible said, he sank. But why didn't John come out to walk? They were all inside the boat, true? Yes, they were all inside the boat. Peter was one man who does, he was, he was fearless. He said, and he said, Peter was the only one who was courageous to ask him, say, if he said you are Jesus, bid me to come. He said, come. And when Peter, what, was come down out of the ship, he did what? He walked. He walked on water. Which no mortal man has ever done outside Jesus. Oh, nobody has done it. Do it. That's an opportunity for you to do it. Nobody has ever written a book like this. Write it. Nobody has opened a shop like this. Open the shop. Dear to be the one to make the difference. Am I communicating with you? Every time you see yourself, nobody has done something. That's an opportunity for you to do it. Now listen. Before we started 
glory reign from metamorphosis from one crusade to another crusade. We have had names, so don't think. We had healing, deliverance. Um, you were in the studio before. What is it? <laughs> healing, deliverance, and medical service. It used to be in the studio before as a pastor. Healing, miracle, and deliverance. That was what we started with. Healing, miracle, deliverance, service. Then one day they came to me and they said, in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, nobody does a big program except a man of God with somebody. I said, ah, what is this? They said, if program people must gather, you must get another man of God from another city. Then you put your face by the person. That that is the only way crowd can come for any program. I said, the people who are coming there, the Christ they have, is it different from the Christ inside us? They said, no, it's not possible to do any program alone. I said, no way, I'll be the first. So 2003, we printed posters with only my face. No big name in quotes. So the whole pastors met. They said, this guy, his ambition, quote, is very, it's too much. What makes him think that people will come to the program? A man of God of blessed memory, after the old thing said, Pastor, let me tell you the truth. Do you know we met? As pastors and pastors said, this boy, this boy who just came yesterday, thinks that he knows too much. This is what for son. That's what I used to call him. Some people hate me, it's not because of me. Because they hate me. Some people hate me, it's not because of me. They hate me with all the hatred they have for Yedekpo. Whoever hates Yedekpo, they transfer to me automatically. <laughs> I know a man of God who almost told me, say, no go live for Yedekpo. He told me for him to call his name, no go live for Yedekpo. I was not at this level. He was talking, 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 talking. He thought I was from Delta State. He was talking, 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 talking. He said, there's a man of God. He, he did something I don't like. He was trying to psych me. I don't really like him. I said, I would. So my face changed. I just did like this. I didn't pretend. I said, sir, I will leave it now. Because he was a senior man, he's a senior man of God. So he said, okay. He said, are you from Delta? I said, I'm not from Delta. He said, from your name, are you not Delta? I said, I'm not from Delta. I just got off. Me and him, we eat with long spoon. I can give him anything, but I don't get close to him. If you don't like Oedekpo, why will you like me? It's automatic. Most people hate me. Don't. It's not because of me. They hate me because of my attachment to Oedekpo is fanatical. He said, why? Find out from God. Without that man, I don't think I would have found direction. So since God used him to find me direction, I'm not a director. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, 2003, let me tell you the story and then I will take the last part and finish, which will not take more than six minutes. And they said, Who is this young man who said he wants to do crusade in this town? This town, this town, this town, civic center of all places. The civic center was like a big place now. Even if you want to do Osha's <laughs> meeting, it will fool. <laughs> that is Osha's of salvation. <laughs> <laughs> Not the whole church, or just ushers of salvation, ministries in Portland, but things that will contain. <laughs> then it was like a big place. They said, Who is this young man? How can he say what to do? Crusade? Nobody has done it. So, by the first day, the place was full. Second day, no space. They said, ah, This thing work for three years. Three years. So three years over, they said, seven years. Seven years over, they said, ten years. Ten years past, I said, I believe I'm making the going away. <laughs> Very soon, those who are mocking you will leave you to go forward. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Please, utilize what? Opportunity. If nobody has done it, be the first to do it. Don't say nobody has opened this kind of shop. Open it. No, I said, nobody has done this kind of business. Be the best to do it. Dear the impossible and do the incredible. That's how to get opportunities. Nobody before Peter walked on water. He was the first to say water. And know how I know? 
Yes, he sank, but you know, he still walked back. Listen, the Bible, read the Bible. He walked to the boat. Jesus not carried him to the boat. That means after he sank, he lifted him. He still walked into the boat. I'm not understand. Listen, I just said, come on to me. You know, he sank by fear. But when Jesus lifted him out, the Bible did not say Jesus carried him to the boat. That means after he lifted him, he still had faith to walk inside the boat. So even if you fell before, bounce back again. Because he walked into the boat with Jesus. Jesus did not carry him inside the boat. There's no way Jesus would have lifted him as heavy as he is to the boat. So in case something you fell before now, another opportunity is what? Coming. You will not miss it anymore. Yeah. You will not miss it anymore. Yeah. And most times, just a step to break through is when everything will look as if they want to. You know, the Bible said the boisterous wind. So you may think that life is collapsing. No, it's an opportunity for the next phase. When the battle is fierce, so hot, God is telling you something's about to happen. Everything look as if they are collapsing. Just the miracle is by the corner. So I hear. Don't give up at that point. Don't give up at that point. Stand strong and you'll make it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me close on this note. Attributes of those who will utilize opportunities. These are the attributes. Attributes of those who will utilize what? Opportunities. I'll give you five of them. I won't take more than a minute to tell you. These are the, if you have these attributes, you utilize any opportunity that come your way. Attributes of those who will utilize what? Opportunities. Number one, they are disciplined. They are what? People that will utilize opportunities are what? Discipline. They bring themselves into law. They know what to do at the right time. I ask yourself, are you disciplined? Discipline with time. Discipline with your speech. Discipline even your taste. In your what? Do you know you have to discipline your taste? Yes. There are things you shouldn't wear now, which you wear tomorrow. There are cars you shouldn't drive now, which you will drive tomorrow. There are houses you shouldn't live now, that you live tomorrow. Yes, you have the opportunity to have money now, but don't go and first and foremost buy something that you know tomorrow you can afford. First invest. First what? Are you getting what I'm saying? Two, they are fearless. They are what? They are fearless. People who utilize opportunity are what? They are fearless. Nothing makes them to be afraid. I command fear to die. It's a God that's not given us the spirit of fear. Second Timothy 1 7. But a power of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7. Fear is a spirit. People that is an opportunity have no what? They don't fear anything. Three, they are obedient. They are what? They are obedient. They are obedient. They are what? God can't tell them something and they delay. Every opportunity comes when you don't delay. As God is speaking, you are what? Doing it. Now, listen, let me explain to you today. Many of you are praying for prosperity. Any day you hear a voice say, give. Don't pray. It's God. I'm, I'm a very deep person to that. The moment a voice, does not mean they must speak even in your heart. So just to give. Satan will never tell you to give. Once you hear give, God wants to lift you. At that point, don't ask questions. Which voice is telling me to give? Just give. Watch. Anytime you obey such voice, you prosper. Are you getting me? But most times, we hear. We not say after. This morning, I prepared what I will do with it. I can't take it off now, for now. Do you know, even some people, the way people give, they, they complain. They say, why are you giving like this? Can't you give small, small? You give small, small, you prosper small, small. So, there are people who get angry. It's not their money, oh. It's your money you're giving, oh. They get angry. So, the way you're giving self, is that how you should be giving? That's why your giving must not be known by other people, even if you're a husband or wife. 
Except the person you're married to is a very open-hearted person. There are people, if a wife knows what the man is giving, she will say, husband, for what now? Now this is okay, they give God for what to me, I don't chop. <laughs> she forgot that it is what is given that determines her breakthrough will come. And there are men too who, if wife is giving, they say, my wife, the way you're giving, is it not too much? Yeah! There is not too much giving to God. Because God himself gave you too much, his son. So don't, there's no overgiving. In fact, it's better you overgive to overget. Permit me. Are you going to be obedient? Be what? So I feel God spoke since you made vow. Cathedral vow. Your, which voice in one year again? <laughs> so I have not paid the vow to now. So somebody came to me, a man of God. He said he wants to pay a vow that God spoke to me. I said, my friend, go and put your offering. Don't disturb me here. He said, God told me, almost after nine years. He said, God told me, now I want to pay my vow. I said, it's you and God, go and pay. Nine years. He came to me and said, Pastor, Papa, I would have paid this vow since, but you know, things. I said, that's why things were hard, because your vow did not pay. That's why a few will vow when Mike Mundo came, you have not paid it today. <laughs> you vow. And dollars has gone up, so how are you going to pay it? <laughs> you vow $1,000. But what you advise that if you like, go to that church, you go pay. Because vow is not all God and not get. Is it better you don't vow? <laughs> than vow. And if you vow, you must pay. No sorry in vow. <laughs> Suffer not that matter to cause it to deflect to sin. Never say before the end it was an error. Therefore, it should have been this one, verse 5 first. Verse 5. I think verse 5. Better is it that thou should not vow than thou shouldest vow and not pay. Do you hear that? Okay. Obey number four. The fourth attribute they seek the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the counsel and counsel from mentors. They seek the guidance of what? The Holy Spirit and counsel from mentors. The fourth attribute. Of those who have opportunities that they seek the guidance of what? Holy Spirit. And the counsel from mentors. Finally, number five, they understand divine timing. They understand divine what? They understand divine timing. They know when to utilize opportunity. Is that true? In First Chronicles 12:32. He said, and the children of Saka, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought what to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. Such persons they know when to appear. When to what? Appear. They know when to utilize the time. Because just imagine if 1996 I never gave. Can I give now? That project has passed. I knew the timing, that this is my time to sow and not to beg. True? Am I communicating with you? They know when the timing comes. So I hear. Are you hearing me? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Finally, always expect opportunities. Always expect what? Always. Are you expecting one? Are you expecting one? Are you expecting opportunities? And how will you know? They will come and cover all. Don't think opportunity will come and show you an opportunity. That's not how opportunities come. Embrace opportunities when they come your way. Embrace what? When they come your way. Then prepare for opportunities. Prepare for what? Let me say this. Do you prepare for opportunities? Hmm? Are you hearing me? When Joseph was called, that's the last scripture, I'm done. When Joseph was called, do you know Joseph did not just go? 
Let me show you from the Bible. Genesis 41, 14. See what Joseph did. He knew this was an opportunity for him to be in the palace. Is that true? Do you know Egyptians, as at that time, don't like people keeping bears? If you're coming to the palace, it must be neat. It must be neat to appear before the king. So Pharaoh knew, so Joseph knew that coming out of prison, he was looking haggard. So look at what the Bible says. Then Pharaoh sent and called what? Take note. And they brought him hastily, quickly, out of the wharf. What did he do? And he shaved himself. How can you now, for instance, you are having a finance company. You now keep this dreadlock. Do you know why they don't allow bankers to keep long beard? You will never see a banker with long beard because they handle money. Why don't bankers say, I can do anyhow? So they keep beard. They don't allow them because they know that people won't trust you with their money. If you appear like that. Did you hear me? There are some way you will dress, nobody will ever address you. In fact, they will miss your address. Somebody wants to marry you. And they say, can I propose to you? For the first time you're meeting him. He said, me, I like pepper soup. <laughs> Even if you like pepper soup, hold your truth. <laughs> that is your first time of meeting him. He said, this lady, she's no different from others. <laughs> Are you here? <laughs> Never appear when opportunity comes careless. Never appear what? Careless. And you know how the northern Nigeria, when I talk, listen to me today, an opportunity came. This is Matthew Yalimu that went with me to, to Arawa. They, they said they want two very top clerics to speak, one a Christian, one a Muslim. The Muslim cleric was this, the most radical cleric in this country. He took a photograph with me. He said, Pastor, can I have a privilege to snap with you? He, everything he was doing was asking for my hair. He said, can I have a privilege? I said, no, why not? Take a picture with me. He said, I listen to you. Do you know I listen to you? Pastor David. This guy is the most radical in this country. And I knew that was an opportunity for the Muslim world to hear me. So when I appeared in Kaduna, <laughs> I didn't say Genesis chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 6, I didn't say so. <laughs> but everything I was talking was from the Bible. But I didn't quote Genesis. I say, you know, God created his own image. So to destroy man is not the best. Because nothing created by God is like him. Where am I coming from? Genesis chapter 1. I said, so when you begin to destroy man, it means you have no respect for God. No matter your religion. <sighs> Genesis chapter 1. I said, God has so much value for man, he doesn't joke with man. For God so loved the world, he gave. But this is Genesis, John 3, 16. When I was done, a business flew with me. We took a, 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 a private jet. 90, if not 80% of the hall left, all Muslims left the hall. These are the radical Muslims. They said they are not going to listen to the man. So I had to do something for them to listen. They said they are going. They said, edit they want to hear. They don't hear and finish. They, they were beating drum. Drum to follow me. When I mean, pizza, they were hitting drum. They said, we don't, we don't do. Say, we don't want you anything again. We don't want you anything again. We don't want you anything. You do it, don't talk, don't finish. Nigeria problem, we don't solve them. <laughs> that was where the radical revolution of my meeting the Northern Muslims started. You know, when you talk to youth, you're talking to nations. Because they came from all the states of Nigeria. Every state of Nigeria. So they say, eh, somebody's like this. So I entered the Islamic world. Today, anywhere I go in the north, even if I appear in Abuja, you see somebody who covered face say, Pastor, I listen to you. Even as I'm talking, they're listening. <laughs> Never appear anywhere careless. When God gives you opportunity. 
It's right here. You are to make an address in your office. <laughs> they said today, come and present speech. You now write the speech as if you are primary six. You forgot that that is the day you are talking to with who? You now say, um, I was so busy, you know, no time self to prepare this speech. Then you now start eating like somebody with the sick. <laughs> Be determined <laughs> to make the best. Are you people hearing what I'm talking? <laughs> they say, this man. Why is it amongst lecturers? There are lecturers you never forgot. And there are some lecturers you forgot their names. Why? The ones who had the opportunities to affect your life, they affected you. Some only sold your hand out. If I want you to leave school, you cause them. You say, this man will die quick. They had the opportunity to affect your life, but they were after handouts. Why well, some affected you that even when you left school, till my headmistress went to be with the Lord, I was taking care of her. She had no son, her only son died. She said, I was, she, from primary school, she affected me, but I did not forget her name. One day I was teaching and I said, there's a woman like this, the children came and said, it's our grandmother, it's our mother. She's going to be with the Lord now. Why? She affected me. Teachers may not have money, but you don't play with them. One profession that they may not have money, but nobody toys with teachers. Check well. Any teacher who affected you 20 years, 30 years, you will forget the teacher. He said, you know, they used to say, sir. They don't call them, but they say, sir, don't come. <laughs> These days, you say, teacher, they say, sir, don't come. That's how the village. They even, in any village, your village, we cut out and say, it's sir, sir is going. Let's send him off. Anytime you have an opportunity, mothers hear me, you have an opportunity to raise your children. Don't utilize it now. Husband, you have an opportunity to bring up your children. Utilize it now. Every time God gives you an opportunity, be determined to make the best out of it. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You are going to take two prayer points and then I'll pray the one God told me. The prayer points are this. You ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to see opportunities around you. Opportunities what? Matthew 7, 7. Ask shall be given, seek you shall find, knock it shall be opened unto you. Ask because it is available. Seek because it is hiding. Knock because what? There's a resistance. In 1 Corinthians 2 3, but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. Hear the spirit said to hear the deep things of God. Holy Spirit, open my eyes to the next opportunity around me. Are you gonna answer now? Opportunities happen every day. Every what? Every what? Day. One day I call a pastor working with me. I said, Pastor, I want to go to this state because. There's a challenge here. It's you I felt who should go there. Solve this problem for me. He says, sir, my wife, father's burial is coming up and can you excuse me? I said, that was the last day he had the opportunity for me to call him. That was the opportunity for him to be lifted in the commission. I said, please, your own boss saying, tell you, please, I need you now to help me. He said, burial of your mother, say your wife's mother. I looked at him and said, excuse me, this man okay? He lost it for life. Hey. Lost it what? Is it the devil? No. It's the opportunity for him to just go, bah! you know my nature. <laughs> Outside ministry, I will go extra mile. But he got the opportunity, but did not recognize it. What is better? Better that he, if he has money, won't he fly from where he is to the better? It's poverty that makes your whole family meeting. All this family meeting for better is poverty. They don't hold meeting for better. Too much meeting is a sign of poverty. They don't hold meeting. For, I never held one meeting. They were coming for my father. Every day they were meeting. <laughs> meeting. I called them. I said, can this meeting close? Every team wanted to give me the list. I said, give me the list. You go to mortuary. They chop my money plus. I said, <laughs> I said, you go for casket. You do announcement. You buy the drinks. 
You do like the same meeting, close. It's poverty, and all the meeting, they will not donate up to 5%. We are meet, meeting for burial is a sign of poverty. That was an opportunity for him to rise in this commission. So opportunity come what? Every day. Don't think it does not come. Even now, where you're sitting, opportunity is by your side. Lord, open my eyes to see what? Opportunities as they come. Will you pray that prayer sincerely? Go ahead in the name of Jesus. Sincerely, Lord, may I see the next opportunity. The Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Jesus. Open my eyes, Holy Spirit, to see the next opportunity. I don't want to miss it. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. I'll take the next prayer point. A pastor with us had a very close friend. I'll tell you the story before you pray. Two of them were like this from the same church. And when this church started, they came one day to pray with us at midnight. And then we're used to, after the all night, because we can't go home freely, we sleep on benches. We lie down on the bench because so one of them said He's, he can't lie on bench I looked at him and said by all privilege even, the, even in my lowest state I was better than him and the other one who was sleeping on bed was still better than him in terms of where we are coming from he said no I can't lie on bench no that was his opportunity to enter the commission the other one said okay we'll be on the bench till morning the two of them, the cap is like this. One today has not found his feet. So as we are talking, he has not found his feet. That word is senior top top. If two of them meet, we used two hands to shake him, even if they were amazed before. He had the opportunity to be in salvation. He came back to apply, but it was late. It was what? We said, we can't take you. I called the man who was working with the television station. I said, please, we don't know. Just help us. Him, he said, No, I can't work with salvation ministries. I can't work with the problem ministries. He's not working with one television, local television station. Some years back, he came back and said, Can they even take me as a cameraman? I said, You are too old for the office. <laughs> he had the opportunity, but he did not utilize it. You are going to pray, second prayer. Ask the Lord to direct your steps. Your what? To places and people who will give you the right opportunities and counsel. For your desired lifting and promotion. He said, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Lord, order my steps. Order what? Give me the right direction that I will meet you. If I just my meeting or anything, well, change my life. That was my opportunity. Are you going now? My meeting who? There are people you meet, your life just do like this. Lord, order my steps. I, I will not miss it. Direct me to places. There are some persons that are meeting me. Your destiny just turned. Is that true? Are you getting what I'm saying now? I was not born again. My wife was born again before me. Then how come we met in the winner's chapel? That was where destiny turned. There are some of you now. Just one step God will guide you. Your destiny will turn. Lord, guide me to such persons. 
guide me to such places. Is that true? That will bring the next lifting of my life. Sincerely pray in the name of Jesus. Leru zeru breketi kato bragati akusa kutale. Zi prekotu brakatale gedi. Bre 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 kisa kutale bre gedi akata. E krato la keto bre gedi akashanto bradi akata. from your heart. Lord and Jesus my name I'm going to tell you and I'll pray for you I was a body of light I sat at the back and the man the politician was on number one seat and when he turned and saw me he said no sir no sir no sir no sir an international flight he said I won't sit on number one this man I don't think is born again I said no no sir Sit in front of that. I'll sit at the back. As I turned, I just, I just turned and I said, God bless your story change. Against all odds in this country, he became a political leader. At the top politically. By one encounter. A young boy in this church. I went for a program. And no seat. He got off from the seat. I said, that is sit here, sit here, sit here, sit here, me, I can stand. I sat before the person who is at the top. I said, no, no, bring Papa to the front. And I went to the front. Against all odds, politically, Tito is lifted. The opportunity came. The opportunity what? Why well, some people will sit down there and say, I can sit, stand up forward. Even if you be a man of God waiting. Have you ever heard of Dangode story? Have you heard it? Most Christians even miss opportunity. Have you heard Dangode's story? Yes, Are you Dangode? Yes, Dangode, is it Dangode? Is that am I correct? Dangode was on board a flight in Benin as a young man. And Ben Senator Hose, a blessed memory, was to fly RTL husband out of the country. No space on, the bo on board a flight. And the flight was already taxing the aircraft. That bishop has a way he behaves. He has this long Mercedes Benz. So he, he drove to the tarmac and stopped. You know, if a car stops like that, you wonder who is this person? Who have the cause to stop in front of an aircraft? And that bishop is very tall. He came out of the aircraft. So the pilot had to stop. And he entered the plane. He said, Bring the thing down. If you say that bishop, you see command and respect. He said, Bring it down. They brought it down. He said, Excuse me, I have two American friends who have to leave now for the United States, and this is the only flight to Lagos. Can two persons volunteer to come down for them to sit? All the Christians did like this. <laughs> Dangode was the one who said, I will offer my seat and that of my secretary for you. He turned and said, Who are you? He said, I'm Ali, you Dangode. 
He said, the world will stand for you. That's a man not in the covenant, but the word of a prophet can't fall to the ground. He said, the way you stood up, the world will stand for you. That was where Leo Dangode's life turned. By one word, opportunity. The Christian said, So, most of us, we have had the opportunities, but we did not know. Oh God, the next one, just as I said, you must pray for, to design it. Because it will not come as you think. God will not bring opportunity to you. Bam! Nah, nah. It will come in, in a covered form. Bishop Dan and somebody met me in Ghana. That's how Bishop Dan became close to me. The man who he met me with was my junior in school. But Bishop Dan and him, two of them, he's closer to me than the man. They met me and went for a program in Ghana. We met at the airport. And the man introduced Bishop Dan to me. The man introduced him to me. But today he will introduce the man to me. <laughs> the man did not utilize the opportunity. And last year he said, God spoke to him, the man, that God said to me, you have missed it. Go back to him. He said, he had God said, the reason you didn't go grow is because you missed your opportunity to utilize this relationship. Go back. The man of God called me in the United States and said, they prayed for me, and the man who prayed for me has never met two of us. He said, do you know David Biomir, a, a foreigner? He said, yes. He said, I saw that man with you. He said, we are close. He said, that is the reason you are not moving. Go back to him. Your destiny is tied to him. And he has gone down. Everybody I pray for today, you will never miss it. <laughs> God has ordained for you, you will not miss the opportunity. In the name of Jesus. By the mercy of God. The Holy Ghost gave me a very deep revelation. Samson's head was shaven and he lost it. But the hair grew back and the anointing was restored. Very deep revelation. In case you missed an opportunity by your carelessness, I decree a restoration right now. Yeah. After Peter sank, he bounced back again. In case you lost it and you went down, I decree in the name of Jesus that opportunity, a new one will come in the name of Jesus. Jesus, as if he lost it. But later, Jesus came back and made him the head of the apostles. I decree wherever you have lost an opportunity, a time of restoration has come in the name of Jesus. <laughs> By this meeting of this day, the next opportunity that will bring about the blessing that will shake nations, come upon you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you will not miss it you will not miss it in the name of Jesus you will not miss it in the name of Jesus God spoke to me clearly yesterday he said pray for them that as you hear me let them hear you and you know when God speaks it is done if God says a thing it is as good as done how many want to hear God clearly the way I hear God is so simple. So what? It's so, I can be talking to you like this and I'll be hearing God. It's so, I hear God in a very simple form. And he told me, I didn't plan to pray for you. If it's only me, will I pray that kind of prayer? No, he said pray for them. So he knows what he wants. I'm not the one. I'm only obeying divine instruction. And it is you, the receiving end, that will determine whether you get it. Me, I will obey. If you, your heart is not open... He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become. So if you receive this instruction which God gave to me, then you are set. You'll be shocked that as you're going, you will hear God. I hear God as a man hears his friend. I don't struggle to hear God. I want you to touch the key. I will obey. And I will pray a very simple prayer for you. The rest left for God to do. Mine is to obey. Mine is to what? 
God is to do, touch the key. Set your heart because from today, if a man hears God, Christianity is very sweet. Oh, Christianity is what? Pastor Charles is here. They brought somebody for me to pray. As I was going to pray, he said to me, don't pray. I turned. He said, Papa, I was shocked because you don't know that man. That man, the truth things out of a church. That's why this sickness came. Now, imagine if I didn't hear God. I was going to pray for the man. Very pathetic. He said, I didn't tell you, but that man in our village or somewhere, the true things of a Pentecostal church out of the house. And that was why this strange plague afflicted him. If you do some problems, if you don't hear God, you get into them. Sometimes when people will die, God spoke. God spoke. But they could not hear. He told them, Come out of this plane. Come out. Come out. But they could not hear. They entered the plane. They didn't get to their destination. There's no disaster that God does not speak. But if you don't hear him, how? I've gone to airport where I turn back after buying ticket. You will hear God. Yeah. This one is the extra. Money can't buy this one. I think you know. You can't buy it in the market. That's why it's good to come up. Now, if you're waiting for Sunday, you miss it today. He said, pray for that today. Now, somebody waiting for Sunday, Sunday, he has missed it. True? You can't buy it with money. You can't. What God told me that I should pray for you, money can't buy it. You can't. Set your heart. said to me, he said, ask them to place a demand, then you just prophesy. So you are the one that will pray, Lord, as he hears you, make me hear you. He said, ask them to pray. They should pray. They should what? Then you will say, God, the way he hears you, make me hear you distinctly. And then I will just prophesy. You pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Seko kakata braga soko tale bregedi kredi ya koshanto bregedi ya kata ziri ya le kato bregedi ya kata le se krakra 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 eko tale bregedi kase kate bregedi Jesus mighty name God said to me clearly he said pastors hear this 
Just the way I hear God, you begin to hear. When you see a pastor say, God said to me, to, from today, watch them. But he said, let not God to your head. Don't think it's just because of you. Pastors will stand on this altar. The way it's like here, I said, there's somebody here who is blind. You see them replicate the same grace. Even pastors who are connected to this meeting. But don't think it's your own. They don't get to your head. You see pastors now from today. They don't do it before. A pastor ministry now here, any of our pastors, we just, no matter who he is, we just say, somebody is blind there. Yeah, you are healed. It's this particular day that you contacted it. But let it not get into your head. Because grace is very funny. If you think it's you and detach, you know that it will dry up. You will, get, you will see sweatless healings, sweatless miracles. You will hear God as a man hears his friend. From this day to the level you have placed a demand, it is not yours. <laughs> Father, I have obeyed your divine instruction. Now confirm your word with signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from this service, let them hear you distinctly. Let your voice become distinct to them. And I vow to give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Give him thanks and praise. Give him thanks and praise. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. One of the greatest assets of a believer is to hear the voice of God. You can't hear his voice and not be a voice on the earth. Are you hearing me? Money can't. Right, you can't buy the money. But hear this. The Lord is my shepherd. He said, my sheep hear my voice. You are not his sheep until you are born again. You can't hear God's voice as a sinner. No. His voice is only accessible to those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Make sure you do that now because if you like, pray, put your hand here. We are not talking about physical deafness. We are talking about spiritual deafness. You must be born again. Offer these prayers wherever you are. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose to save me. With my mouth, I confess you. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you offer that prayers, don't sit with others. Keep standing while others take their seats. Please attend to those who are standing in all churches. If today is your first day to worship with us, kindly stand. We want to welcome you. You are special. On behalf of the head of the church, Jesus Christ, I want to welcome all of you. Everyone coming for the first time, your life will never remain the same. They will give you a paper, fill it, give it back to them, and those around the tell them we celebrate you. Make sure you are a part of all the rest services within the week, and your story will keep changing. Congratulations, and God bless you. Amen. We pray over the communion. Today is the last day. Is that through? Without the shedding of blood, there wouldn't have been resurrection. Resurrection became reality because Jesus shed his blood and he declared it is finished. What he has finished, no devil cannot finish it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Finish with dead. Finish with sin. Finish with every evil. It says, I partake of your flesh and blood. It is finished. By one sacrifice, he paid it all. He made all perfect. Stand to your feet. Stretch your hands and decree that as a particular of flesh and blood, the price you paid will be eternal. I'm not permitted to suffer anything you, are, you suffered. You suffered untimely death that I will not die untimely. You, everything you paid the price for, I'm not permitted to suffer all. And in case you are suffering any of them, declare your liberty now. Go ahead in the name of Jesus.
Declare it is finished with sickness and pains and disease. I want sacrifice. He paid the price. In Jesus' mighty name. He said, because I bear upon me the mark of the Lord, no more trouble me. As this blood touches your head, every evil pass over. Amen. Plagues pass over. Amen. Dead pass over. Amen. To everyone called sick, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your health is fully restored. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Give thanks to God. Hallelujah. Wisdom for greater exploits. We have seen exploits at different levels and dimensions. And everyone will agree with me that by this meeting, everyone is set for greater exploits. We have had that wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. It's crucial to know what to do. I would like to show you a scripture from Isaiah 48, 21. Bible says, And they thirsted not when he led them. Through the deserts, he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. God has used his servant, Papa, to bring us into greater dimension of the leading of God. That is to say, to know what to do and doing it. And tonight we are face to face with opportunity by this 27th anniversary for a change, a shift into greater exploits. Seven years ago, about this time, 20th anniversary, God showed me a seed to sow. A very close someone said to me from America, not registered. And I saw it in Papa's life. God took me beyond the barrier that hinders into the multi-millions. If you truly want greater exploit, the grace has come down. For you to set your ear to hear what must I do with this opportunity of this 27th anniversary. And I know the God of heaven is too faithful to fail a man who is committed and determined to see greater exploits. Package your seed, your tithe, your glory and sacrifice. Your cathedral project seed, whatever it is. Trusting God who will never fail to divide any rock that will not allow your blessings to gush out. You will see money, blessings more than ever before by this anniversary. Speak to your seed. Heavenly Father, thank you for causing overflowing blessings for everyone whose heart is set on the Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, cast your seed. No. 
You're the promise of God. You're the promise of God. Come for the Please maybe sit there. We want to especially thank all the men and the women of God who have been part of this meeting. God bless all of you. I know you have been introduced. Some are not even at the headquarters and branches, but we want to say to everyone who left his our church to be a path, God will honor you likewise. Amen. Those of you who travel, your journey back shall be safe. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In case they forgot to introduce you, please forgive them. Amen. It's not intentional. I don't think as a business must have done it intentionally. If they omitted your name, please. The most brand that you have been blessed is not introduction that is more important. The next week of spiritual empowerment for May will hold 7th to 9th of May. The theme is the faith that works. The faith that works. Then tomorrow at 6 p.m., we have online special miracle service. We are focusing more on healing. So that we don't have to take, because healing takes time. You know, if I did healing, we'll be closing around 9. So tomorrow we'll focus more on healing, but I'll touch every area of miracle. Miracle of prosperity, miracle of fruitfulness. It will be a miracle service, but it will be online. So advertise on all social media platforms for people to join all over the world. People are sick all over the world, so ask them to join. Amen. Good news. <laughs> on Saturday, April 13th, Salvation Ministries will celebrate our anniversary. The service will be at 4 p.m. so we can close early for Sunday services. It's going to be free dress in case you're a man of God. Please wear your native. We are not wearing suit that day, man. So you don't want to wear a suit. It's an anniversary we are celebrating, so you're free to wear a native on Saturday. We are native. If you want to wear a suit, no problem. But it's not compulsory. It's a, it's a free dressing. It's a free wear English or anyone you want to wear. But I'm sure the tie has been on for some time, so you can loosen the tie small. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And Sunday will be special Thanksgiving service. <laughs> Sunday also will be free dressing. We are thanking God for his faithfulness. And 
for everyone who loves this church, make sure a soul come to celebrate with you. Because that's the only way you will know that you are love Jesus. Bring one soul for the week to celebrate with you, and God will bless you. Please, I know Saturday churches will open on time. Some of you will even prefer to do vigil. But please, don't, <laughs> don't stress yourself. All churches, in to avoid, most of when doors are closed, I just got that they push, which is not necessary. So open the church early. People want to sit, can sit. At the headquarters, you keep this side. Please, all full-time pastors officiate. Don't, nobody should wear a tie and sit anywhere. All full-time pastors officiate different areas. That's, you came to serve, so serve. This place will be reserved for pastors and visitors. For instance, at the headquarters, the whole of this place. Cordulole here, and then also we don't demand that people of 70 and above, you give them some respect. So keep some seats here for 70 and above. At least they will not come that early. They are matured people. You can't allow 70 and above to come and sit in the morning. So all the young, young people, please cordle some places here for 70 and above. Not all, some places here for the elderly people. Let them have space. Because they can't you don't expect them to come early. But the rest, those of you who are members of the church, you are celebrating, you are free to come anytime you want to come. Are you having occupied it? Jesus comes. But can you do every church a favor? You are a member. So make sure you help in making sure our visitors have seats also. It's not good. Visitors come and then you, the member, is sitting down. So follow them to arrange televisions, overflow, canopies, overflow. Walk, that's what I mean. Are you going to now? Walk, follow them to, don't sit down, and then you are seeing no canopy. If it means you renting a canopy for your branch, rent a canopy. Because by 4 o'clock, some places, sun is still a bit hot. Not every place. So the northern part, there is still heat around 4. So rent canopies, look for projectors. Do anything you know that will make the occasion a huge success. Don't find fault. Look for solution. Solve every problem. It's an opportunity for God to bless you. Use your resources, everything, to make sure the overflows are taken care of. God will bless every one of us. Has God blessed you? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Did, did God use me to bless you? Yes, sir. Do you thank God on my behalf? Yes, sir. Saturday, let me say this to you from the depth of my heart. I don't think, I told God, I said, I don't want this week to be an ordinary week. We have done anniversaries. But I told him, I said, the week must be a spiritual week. A week that things must not be conventional. Market, whatever God has done in this commission, he will do it in your life. It's going to be a landmark anniversary, not just for... It's more spiritual than physical. In fact, the anniversary is not fun. It's purely a spiritual anniversary. He told me to establish his kingdom on earth. So whatever is not found in heaven will not be found in your life. Amen. And whatever heavens enjoy, you will enjoy it. Amen. Don't come on Saturday unprepared. Come on Saturday prepared. Are you getting me? Because one word can turn your world. One word? It was one word, just one word. It was spoken our life. Turned our world. It's not how many words. It's the heart with which you receive. It will be a, an event that will change your life. Rise to your feet. We are going to, I will always pray that it has worked. So don't say it's too much. Pray that everybody must go home safely. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Preserve everyone's life going back home. No one is permitted to be a victim of any evil. In Jesus' mind, lift your hands to heaven. Whatever God has done these three days, may your portion be delivered to you. 
This is our week of anniversary. May your own celebration start from now. In the name of Jesus. Whatever good thing you desire, before Saturday, you see it manifest in your life. From the depth of my heart, I pronounce you blessed. In the name of Jesus. Even things I can't say from my heart, I declare them to find expression in your life. Not one person that is a part of this week of empowerment will ever regret. God will wipe away your tears. Between now and weekend, you will dance. In the name of Jesus, you will hear good news. The God of heaven bless you. Remember you now for good. Peace wherever you go. In Jesus' mighty name. The grace together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the sweet flow of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Look at somebody say correlations.